Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning to another episode today of Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha. Today is for the single people who are out there. If you know people who are not married yet, this is for you. 10 ways to prepare yourself for marriage. Mm. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. If you are newer to our podcast, welcome. We are so glad. We pray all the time. God, let people who need to find our show, let them find Amen. it. And we hope to bring value to your life and help you grow closer to God and closer to the people that God has placed in your life. This is my wife, Tabitha. We've been married for 24 hey, hey. years. Um, you're looking beautiful as always, sweetheart. If I could sing, I'd sing to you right now. Is there anything um, on your heart that God's been speaking to you about? Anything that's like, man, I've been studying this, looking at this, mm. and I just want our audience to know this. Do you mm. have a this revelation? You know, uh, I don't know if I have the whole revel a whole revelation yet, but Give I can tell you what, I, what I've been studying. Uh -huh. And so, you know, I don't know, it was maybe like a month ago or so, uh -huh. I asked the Lord for whatever reason, just like, help me to be uh, more aware of your presence. Yeah. Help me to be more aware of the Holy Spirit who is with me. Uh -huh. And um, since then, you know, I just had been running into and studying scripture about the spirit yeah. and spiritual maturity, yeah. you know, growing in the gifts of the spirit, mm -hmm. growing in, you know, because we are a spirit, we have a soul and we live in the body. Mm -hmm. And so many times I'll speak to myself, I can focus on the body, the body, the body. I need to exercise. I need to eat. Mm -hmm. I need to drink water. I need to take these vitamins. Mm -hmm. I need to get dressed. What I look like. It's, there's so much focus on the body. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, ho I heard a really old school preacher that I was talking to, um, that I was listening to. Yeah. He said, I am so aware of my spirit being that sometimes I just forget about my body. I so, and I thought that was like crazy, right? Like you're just, you know, kind of like a ghost walking around, like, you know, and you can take that to the negative too. Like you got to think about your body. But anyway. Yeah, yeah, you do. With all that being about. said, like, you know, I am focusing on who I am, the spirit being, mm -hmm. the light, the image and likeness of God in the spirit and growing um, in the gifts of the spirit, growing uh -huh. spiritually mature. And, all, and I think you said in the beginning. Being aware of the being presence of the Lord. aware of the presence of the Lord. Well, and it's you. quite a journey. Yeah. It's nice. Well, good. Well, let's journey on, praise come God. Come on. Well, anyway, guys, um, if you really want to grow spiritually, come to a live conference, mm. okay? If you want more information about a live conference happening in Orlando, mm -hmm. Florida, the second week of October, we would love to have our audience, you guys who are tuning in to come into Orlando, spend mm -hmm. three days with us. If you want more information, check out our website, get your ticket before they are all sold out. Today's show is entitled 10 Ways to Prepare Yourself for Marriage. All right. I want to build some quick foundation for today before we dive into those 10 steps. You do not have to be married, y'all, to be fulfilled. Can yep. you talk about that? Foundation number one. Absolutely. Our fulfill, our fulfillment comes from God. It yeah. comes from Jesus Christ when he, we accept him as our personal Lord and yeah. Savior. He is the fulfillment. He's everything that we need. The Holy Spirit of God, you know, like we we are fulfilled <laughs> in Christ. Um, and so I think a lot of times we hear that when we get married, like I, this is my better half, you know, or like the two will, the two halves will become a whole. And that's kind of like, it's not true. Right. You know, we're not less of a person because we're not married. If you are waiting to get married to be fulfilled, you're going to be sadly disappointed mm -hmm. when you get married. Mm -hmm. You want to come into marriage already being fulfilled. You already want to be two holes coming together. Right. You don't want to be two halves coming together. And so I just want to hit that from the beginning. Um, we're not sharing this with you because there's some people who feel a call to singleness, mm -hmm. like Paul and like Jesus. I say right on, do yep. what you do. But the majority of people probably want to be married one day. Mm -hmm. So we want to give them these 10 things in preparation for that. My second part of foundation would be, Sometimes God will hold something back from you because you're not ready yet. Mm. And I think that's important to know. Number one, you don't have to be married to be fulfilled. But number two, sometimes you are still single because honestly, you're not ready for anybody yet. You would get married and tear it up. You would tear it up. You would tear yourself up. You would tear them up. It would just be a tear up fest. And I don't believe that God will put on you more than you can really handle. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I do believe that as a good father, he doesn't want the blessing to become a burden. And so if I was in a single season and I love this because what a lot of people say, well, y'all been married. 
24 years. Well, you've been single just as long as you've been married. Mm -hmm. Now, I I crossed that threshold that I've been married a couple years longer than I was single. But you met you. We got married when you was 24, 23, 23. Yeah. Okay. so you got one year. Yeah. Uh, So you've been married now 24 years, Mm -hmm. single 23. I guess what I'm saying is that we know what it's like to be single, Mm -hmm. even though it was a while ago. But we also pastor a bunch of single people. And I think I want people to know that sometimes if you're believing God for your Boaz, believing God for a husband, believing God for a wife, sometimes he has not released that because you have to work on you. Yeah. And you got to do a deep work to develop your patience, your selflessness. Um, Your mindset, because I'm telling you, marriage is a magnifier and it will magnify those inconsistencies. And so Proverbs 24, 7, it says, prepare your work outside and get it ready for yourself in the field. Afterward, build your house and establish your home. Mm -hmm. Proverbs gives us an order. It says, get your landscaping ready, do your engineering work, do your topography for where you're going to build this house. You need to get the blueprints and the engineering work done. And after you do that, build your house. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who are building their house, but they haven't worked on their heart. They haven't worked on the soil of their heart. Mm -hmm. They haven't worked on their mindset, their hurts, their habits, their hangups, and they're trying to build something on a faulty foundation. We want to get you prepared. And that's what I want to give you, 10 ways to prepare yourself now as a single. That's good for what you say you want are you ready i'm ready number one is don't compare your relationship status to anybody else's there are too many people that are down low sad because somebody else is living the dream that you desperately want Mm -hmm. they see their friends getting married and they're still single they see their friends going on honeymoons and they at home they see their friends having children but they don't have anybody to have children with and what i've learned is that you never really know what's going on behind closed doors. You don't really know. Yeah. There are a lot of people posting pictures that they happy, but they ain't really happy. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of people who are married, but they wish to God they were single. Mm-hmm. And then you got the single people wishing to God they were married. Yeah. And it's all like, you got to be content at whatever state you're in. Mm-hmm. What do you think about that? Um, I like that. And I, I noticed what you said is that, um, you know, uh, before that, you, you <laughs> talked about maybe God you know, maybe you need to get yourself together first. You know what I mean? And sometimes, you know, I think some people can be single and maybe they're waiting on their, their husband or their wife to get it together. I mean, I've met so many people who, what you mean, help them get themselves together. No, no. Uh Like the the person that God has for you, Uh God's working on them right now. God needs another six months until they're, until they're ready. You know what I mean? Like God, give me another three months. Give me another year because I got the right person for you, but trust me, wait for it, Mm -hmm. wait for it. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be good when it comes. But you know, sometimes, you know, the people that we see out there and they're in maybe having trouble in their relationships, they didn't wait. They didn't want to wait six months. Yeah. And they rushed into Mm -hmm. that. Okay. Number two, don't believe the lies of the enemy. Okay, and that's one thing you have to choose now as a single person, Mm -hmm. Um, because the Bible calls Satan a liar. Uh, No, it actually calls him the father father of lies. lies. So all of the lies that we hear basically originates with Satan. He's Mm -hmm. the father of it. So he says this kind of thing to single people. You're not attractive. You're defective. Nobody's ever going to want you. You're too old now. Who wants to be with you? And you got all those kids. Your standards are too high. Your standards are too low. Mm -hmm. What man going to want you with all you've done? What woman's going to want you and you don't have this and you don't have that? And sometimes you just got to say, shut up, devil. devil And you got to put him underneath your feet because Mm -hmm. the devil is a liar. He's actually the the father father of of those lies. lies. Yeah, I would say, (laughs) you know, when I think about let's just let's let's just use common sense with it. You know what I mean? And really, like you can look around at all kinds of people who are married. They might not be attractive. Mm -hmm. They might not have good jobs. Uh They might not be smart. Uh You would never marry them. Uh And my point in that is the enemy will try to look at you and say, well, you're not married because you're too fat. You're too ugly. You're too, you're not smart enough. You don't have, you know, those are all lies because there's a bunch of married people out there today. None of those things. That doesn't make sense, devil. That's a dumb, you know, that's dumb. That doesn't make sense. Come, come again. Try, you know, try something else. This one, I'm too smart for that one. Mm -hmm. I've even seen people who were once married before, or they were in some long lasting relationship. And after that, after the divorce or after that relationship was over, that person that they split from on the way out the door says, 
all these mean things about mm. them. Like, this is why it's over, because you're not this, and that's why I'm leaving with this person, and I'm going to be with this person, and you're not this, and you're not that. Mm. And you do have to go through a season where you send those words back to hell where they Absolutely. came from. Absolutely. Because those people do not define you. Mm-hmm. And I always, I, don't, I heard a saying years ago that one man's trash is another man's treasure. Mm-hmm. And just because somebody treats you like trash doesn't mean that you're actually trash. Mm. And you're treasure because of who God says that you are. Yes. You're an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ Jesus. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter the because when people break up with you or break it off, Satan tries to use them to tear down who you are. Yeah. And you got to go back to the word to build yourself up. Yeah. And and also people who speak those kind of mean, you know, abusive, unkind things, uh-huh. don't listen to them. Yeah. They don't respect themselves enough right. to not let those come nasty on. things come out of their mouth. Yeah. I'm not about to sit here and listen to what you had to say. Come on. Like, I, I just... Yeah. Don't go there. Number three would be don't be pressed. Mm-hmm. That's what I would want somebody who's single to know. In the preparation season, don't be pressed. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying don't give people the cold shoulder because yes. I think people do that too much too. Yes. It's almost like you act so not pressed, you're not even baiting the hook. Mm-hmm. So people would think that you're not even interested in dating or seeing anybody because you actually took it too far. <laughs> you want to say something about that? You look like her. I mean, I've probably done, uh, well, you know, both of those things uh-huh. in the past, but um, yeah. Yeah, when it comes to, you know, the the whole, I mean, both of them. Okay, let's take the press one for being pressed. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I mean, especially for girls. Now, you know, I can say this because I'm a woman, especially for women. What I would, you know, I find that women who chase the man uh-huh. usually never, usually, I mean, they're... I know some. Usually. somehow... I'm not saying initiate because women, you can initiate initiate. like, would you like to go like coffee or like I'm not saying I'm not saying initiate. I'll go back to the I'm saying chase. chase. chase, I'm saying you chase after him. He don't call you. You call him. He don't ask you, you know, like uh, you're always chasing after him. It don't work. Listen, after that first date. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if he's well, not guys, calling we you, we won't let you know if we're interested. Mm-hmm. You know, we actually guys are wired to want kind of the thrill of the hunt mm-hmm. a little bit. And like, if you take away the chase, that's actually what yeah. We don't do. be too easy don't for too him. Easy. Let him work for it. Like he wants to back, work for his meal. Even back in the day when I was not living for God. Like if a girl was too easy, mm-hmm. um, I would take which was easy, but then didn't want to talk to her any longer. Mm-hmm. And I know that's sad. I'm saying long time ago, long time ago, before being filled with the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. back when I was in the world. If it's too easy, it's too easy. Yeah. Um, and then there's people that make it too hard. But it, when I say don't be pressed, give me what comes to your mind. Any examples? Don't be pressed. Um, How, well, like I said, you know, pressed. blowing him up on his, um, you know, his cell pager. phone. I thought you were about to say no, on his cell phone. You <laughs> uh-huh. know, all these texts, all these voice messages. You stalking him on social media. Uh-huh. Um, you're, you know, asking his friends and stuff. Where is he? Like, just like leave him alone. Let uh-huh. him come and find out what you like. What your favorite color is. What restaurant you like to go to. Like, uh-huh. just you know, leave him alone. For me, it would be being pressed would be go too deep too fast. Mm-hmm. You know, you're on a first date. You you, you kind of gotta you gotta wade the water. There's a mm-hmm. wisdom with this thing. You know, mm-hmm. um, too too easy or available. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you should have some things like, hey, you want to go out Thursday? Well, you know what? I got this class that I do on Thursday night. Okay, how's Friday? Okay, yeah, Friday. I can't do six, but I can do lunch. I mean, mm-hmm. like not you know like mm-hmm. like uh uh they call but, you. Go ahead. And and you don't I'm not saying like you don't have to be fake, but be you know you be real uh-huh. and genuine in it like. You know, you have a life, you know what I mean? Do things that you like to do. Go to the YMCA, do an exercise program, join a small group, you know, take a new class, have something that you're doing and you're interested in so that when he does come along, you're like, oh, snap, no, because I got my small group on Tuesday at seven o'clock. So how's Thursday at six? You know, like, you know, I can't explain exactly what I mean by pressed, but I would say that's a person who lacks a level of security and inner confidence. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like as a woman of God, and even as a man of God, that when it comes to the dating, there should be a knowing who you are. Mm -hmm. There should be a little level of confidence that's Mm -hmm. exuding Mm -hmm. to where it's not like you're just so thirsty that you're just going to take And you got to know that about yourself, though. Know that about yourself. Spend enough time in the presence of God, knowing that God loves you, um, so that the 
you know, when he's telling you, I mean, because he could be just a joker. Right. You know what I mean? Like, not really. He just, you know, is really not that into you, but this is what he does. Right. He's not ready to settle down yet. He don't believe what you believe, all of that stuff. And so that he says, if you're thirsty mm-hmm. or if you're pressed mm-hmm. and you you want, you know, you're hungry for love like that because you don't have it from God. Mm-hmm. Maybe you don't know who you are. You haven't had spent your time in the word to build yourself up in the word of God. The first time he says, oh, you're so beautiful. I love you. All of these things. Now you fall for it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right from the beginning. <laughs> you had me at hello. Well, then you end up, it never, most of the time it doesn't even, you don't even end up at the altar. It's just another broken relationship, yeah. another, you know, soul tie, another and so we're not saying come over here to where it's cockiness and it's cold yeah. and it's hard to get, but there's just a level of confidence that you yeah. have in the security. And it's almost this position of if I get married, praise God. And if I don't, praise God. Like I'm good with who I am. Mm-hmm. I desire that. I want to mm-hmm. spend my life with someone. But if I don't, I'm still going to have joy and peace and you know all of mm-hmm. that. Number four, don't be too picky. All right. And I don't know if this is a man thing more than a woman thing. You tell me. But sometimes I feel like we are too picky, specifically when it comes to, you know, you got to be picky on spiritual things. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I want to make sure if I was single to find somebody that's going my same direction. I don't want to be unequally yoked trying to drag you to church every Sunday. Absolutely. Trying to get you to tithe and trying to get you to give and live right. I don't know if you, I, 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 right. I, I, I ain't, I ain't, I'm, I'm going to be picky when it comes to spiritual things. But when it comes to like how a person looks, <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like, I mean, talk to you the You think ladies. people Let's are too there. picky? I think they too picky. Uh, I mean, you've been single for 47 years. And now it's like, well, I don't know. He's just not tall enough. Like, what that got to do with it? Like, do he got a job? Do he love wow. him? Do, do, does he go to the gym? Okay. I mean, I don't know. Is that uh, is that just me? I think, I mean, when it comes to being attracted to someone, at least you need to be attracted to the person. Yeah, I agree. But being picky as far as he has to be a certain height, a certain skin color, a certain, you know, like, I think that. That's that's different. But I think that some people bring those things over into their if they're attractive or not, because people are can be attractive more than how they first look physically. Mm-hmm. Their personality can be attractive. Their thoughtfulness Absolutely. can be attractive. Their intellect their can be attractive. Their confidence, their swag. Their that's what we mean. Attractive. Yeah. But sometimes we're so picky that they don't even get a first date or mm-hmm. a second date because you're just judging how a person looks like on the outside. Yeah. I don't know if, I mean, tell me if you think differently, but I'm just like. I mean, I think it's true. I mean, uh-huh. it, it's hard to say, but I think we both know several people mm-hmm. over several years who we'd be like, well, what about this person? What about that person? No. And their response uh-huh. was so like, you know, in a way that we'd be like, mm, you might not ever get a husband or a wife if you're judging off That's of those. That's what it is. Of. That's what I'm feeling. That's yeah. what I'm getting at. Yeah. So over the years, people of God, we've had people that have been a part of our church or that we've known that really want to be married. And when we say, hey, what about this person? It's like, And we uh, know they're great people. They're we, great people. We know them. Yeah, we know them. <laughs> but they don't look like Denzel or something. Right. You know what I'm saying they're right. not like Patrick Swayze. I'm just throwing out names. Right, right, I don't right. know who women think are good looking. I don't know. But anyway, but it's just like. But but it's like, nah, nah, nah. And we like, why not? Yeah. You've been believing God for 15 years. Why not? I think God did me a favor when I <laughs> when met he get, you. Yes, he did. Because like I I was just hopeless without God. And I think that's the thing is just, you know, be ask the Lord to help you with this. You uh-huh. know, like I think sometimes um, I hear singles, they write a list, mm-hmm. you know, uh, of not demands, but, you know, my. This is what I'm believing. This God is what for. I'm believing God for. And we present that to God. Uh-huh. But just like you present that to God, in the same way, Mm -hmm. God, help me with anything on this list that I need to change, even if... if he's, you know, if the person you have for me is not anything like this list, show me, Lord. Because mm-hmm. I think sometimes, I don't know, because we got to give you the desires of your heart. And I know that. And you have not because you asked not and all of that yeah. stuff. But uh, I would just, not have been on her list. Th- let me just say I that. would not have been on her list. You were not on but my list. I am better than her list. I am. I'm, I check all the boxes that her list didn't even know that it needed. I didn't even know. Didn't even know. No. Oh, uh-uh. my goodness. Uh-uh. And so, yeah, like, so when I met you, I would like, I didn't even want it. You know, I was just done with men altogether because I thought that all men were 
are just cheaters and liars and disgusting. I didn't want anything to do with men. Okay. I was about to miss it. But when I turned around and looked at you, in fact, you asked me, Hey, you know, what's my, what's your name or whatever. And I was like, ignoring you. Mm -hmm. I was just like, didn't want to talk to you at all. But you said, I saw you in church on Sunday and that's how God helped me. Cause I wasn't going to look at you at all. Like we just, I was going to give you a fake number. You would not know. (laughs) Mm. I wasn't saved But the I don't point. feel like you looked at me and was like, you're not tall enough and you're not dark enough. No, I didn't do that. that. Not at all. Mm-hmm. Not at all. And those were, might have been some of the things on your natural list. But when I, yeah, on my natural list, it would have been tall, dark skin, bald head. Um, I, I was, I liked Tyson Beckford back in the day. Um, which he was a supermodel, like all of this stuff. You're mad because I said his name. I'm mad because huh? you said his name because there's women that I be saying their names. And when I say their names, you'd be like, it's not appropriate. Well, for you, you to don't be like, because I don't want the, you from the stage you of better the podcast. Not either. I'm going to say all their names not. right now. What's up, girl? <laughs> well, well the, the point is back in the day, because uh-huh. now. <laughs> Yeah, I probably shouldn't have said a name. But now, no, please. I just, I'm completely. <laughs> She's dug herself in a hole. I'm and completely gentlemen. America, brainwashed, America, Ken Clater. <laughs> have you heard? The point was, uh-huh. the point is, um, physical, physically wise. I'm so glad you said that. Because ah, you just want to say stuff. I do. No, because you never people. told me not to say the name. There's people that but I, I told say. you. Yeah, because I don't care. That's a long time ago. It ain't I got nothing care. to do with me. You you know had babies by me and I care. You know, got my ring on. I don't care about that. But see, I don't know why you care. Anyway, number five is don't settle. <laughs> Did we ever finish the? Point? No, the number four was don't be too picky. Yeah. And number yeah. five was don't settle. Okay. And these two points go hand in hand. Yeah. Because there's some people that's too picky, and then there's some people that settle. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes we can say, well, I ain't gonna be picky. I don't mean go marry Magilla Gorilla. Um, at the same time, who's Magilla Gorilla? I don't know, but don't settle. And so. Only the wisdom will help you mm-hmm. identify if you are too picky or if you're settling. Because yeah. we're saying both. Yeah. And so when it comes to settling, it's kind of like, you know, do you enjoy being around this person? Yeah. Do they get you? Do you feel better when you're and, around them? Do they add value mm-hmm. to you? Are you going the same direction? Mm-hmm. Do you have same spiritual passions? Don't settle for those things. Yeah. I'm not trying to drag you into the end zone mm. the rest of my life. I was going to say, I know for women, I think in what I see in the church world is that a lot of women settle for men who aren't spiritually mature. Well, why is that? Um, I think because they're settling. They're just like, well, he's good enough. He comes to church with me on Sunday. So I think there is a, um, what is it when there's a scarcity? Maybe there's a Uh shortage of spiritually mature Mm men. And I'm not judging them at all. I think that many times when men get married, God uses their wife to help them mature. Amen. That's meaning that I think that there's a reason for that. I'm not saying that it's right. I'm not saying that I'm, you know, that I mm. can quantify it. I'm just saying that I think that's the problem. But go ahead. What's your point? Uh, I was going to ask you for men. Uh-huh. I think, you know, for men who settle, do you feel like a lot of men settle um, for women that they don't necessarily, maybe they're not attracted to, they settle because she's there. Maybe that um, she is rude and kind of, you know, always got to come back, but they settle because it's basically like, well, I'm just going to listen to her. She wants to get married and she won't leave me alone. So I'm just going to get married. In my experience, I do not think that men settle as much as women do. Okay. It just in my experience. In my experience, though, I have seen men settle. And when they settle, it's more like, well, I wasn't really attracted to her, but she was so nice and she loved the Lord and she checked all these boxes, but I wasn't really attracted to her. Mm. And I do believe that when you get married, you need to be attracted to that person. There is a romantic, physical, intimate side of our relationship that's very, very important. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that he has to be, you know, have a six pack or so forth, but there needs to be a level of like, I'm attracted to this mm-hmm. person. And so that's where I see God settling. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's like the common thing. Wow. Mm-hmm. But anyway, don't settle, but don't be too picky. Number yep. six will be get your finances right. And to me, that's important. As it relates to preparation before marriage, you don't want to come and God finally put somebody in your life and it's like, well, you know, I, I got all this debt and my credit is messed up. We don't want them to be like you used to be. And so I had this whole project no, that I took on. When I said I do to you, I said I do to bad credit, to mm. debt, to people. And so I had to, for the first two, three years, just work ourselves out of a hole. That's not God's best. Yeah. And we yeah. didn't know nothing back then, but that's not God's best. And so what I'm suggesting is that in the preparation um, season, Mm -hmm. you're still single. 
you don't have anybody. This is the time for you to boss it. This is the time for you to climb up the ladder of success in your career. This is the time for you to buy a home. Yes. yes. If you are single, go buy you a home. When? Now. That is the foundation of your wealth. These houses are appreciating in most markets. Not sure what nation you're in, but here in America, in most cities, stuff is appreciating. You're getting a tax deduction. You already own a home? Fine. Turn that one into a rental property. Do a long-term rental. Do an Airbnb rental. You got two or three homes? Fine. Go get you another one. If real estate is not your thing, um, you know, uh, invest in stocks, mutual funds, maybe a business here and there. Mm-hmm. This is just a time where you don't have the responsibility to take care of that husband. Yeah. Um, you can be number one about the work of the Lord, but number two, you can get your financial house in order. So when you, when you finally meet somebody, it's like you're meeting somebody that adds value to you and you're adding value to them. Anything Amen. on that one? No, that's good. Okay. Number seven, I would say deal with your past and get healed because mm-hmm. in the season of preparation, um, uh, you know, like I say, um, marriage is a magnifier. Mm-hmm. And so if you have a bunch of hurts and habits and hangups from past trauma, specifically childhood trauma, a lot of what is manifesting today, if you talk to most psych- t- psychologists, whether it be confusion and gender or even sexuality, mm-hmm. they will tell you that 85 percent of, of people that are struggling mm-hmm. in those areas have childhood trauma that's been unresolved. Mm-hmm. I was just talking to a certified psychologist Um, counselor. And she was telling me that they will say, well, I'm this way. And my trauma that I've been through helped me come to my, to to realization of who I really am. When truthfully, the trauma that you've been through helped you believe that lie. It molded you Mm -hmm. into that. And all it is, is that I have not really dealt with trauma in a biblical godly way. And I just feel like if you don't deal with your past, it's going to come up in your future. And there are a lot of people that are rushing into marriage without dealing with the fact that I felt rejection and abandonment from someone who was in my past. This is what I saw. This is the abuse. And so then you get married and it's manifesting in your sex life. It's manifesting in the way that you perceive Mm -hmm. the opposite gender because you just didn't deal with the junk in the trunk. Wow. (laughs) That is so true. I mean, I'll I'll say that firsthand. Uh, That's exactly what I did. I did not deal with my past. I got married and there was my past. I brought it into the marriage with me. Mm -hmm. And so when we were married, I was depressed with severe depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. I was taking antidepressants. I was going through therapy. Mm -hmm. I was working it out in our marriage and it, affected our marriage. I mean, it almost ended our marriage. Um, And so it was harder to do inside of the marriage. How much better Mm -hmm. would it have been if I came to the marriage complete, completely healed from my past? It would have been so good. You can do it. I mean, you can can do it. You can do it because a lot of people say, well, I need to get myself together. I can't work on my marriage. Well, if you're married, you got to do both at the same time. Yeah, you got to do both. But if we're talking to single people, and that's what we're doing. You have today. the opportunity. You got the opportunity to do it before you get married. Yeah. Number eight will be growing God. Mm-hmm. I think in this season, um, I think there's a scripture in First Corinthians seven and thirty-two. Mm-hmm. It says, "But I want you to be without care. Mm-hmm. He who is unmarried cares for the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he who is married cares about the things of this world, how he may please his wife." Mm-hmm. The principle is vice versa. Basically, the single people should be the most turned up people in the whole church. They should be the ones that show up when the church is open. They should show up for midweek. They should show up for small groups because what the scripture is saying is that when you're single, you should first off be about the work of the Lord. Mm. I know you a boss lady. I know you a boss man. I know you a career person, but you got to put God first. Mm -hmm. But then when you get married, you're going to care about the things of this world, not the things like the ungodly things of this world. Right. You have to take care of my needs as a man. Yep. And I got to take care of your needs as a woman. And so now there are certain things that I can't do for the Lord because I have to take care of the ministry of our marriage first. Absolutely. And so in the single season, you get a great opportunity to go after God, like to go hard, mm-hmm. to spend time in prayer, to go on missions trips, to go to multiple small groups. I mean, you get an <laughs> opportunity to build this wonderful foundation in Jesus that you can build the rest of your relationship upon. Yeah, Do that's it. so good. And, and I know being a wife and a mother, um, there are certain times where, you know, well, I'm not coming to midweek because I got to go do this with my kids yeah. and um, you know, having babies, it's just like, you know, I can't, I can't surf right now. I just had a baby or, you know, like give me six weeks, <laughs> yeah. you know? So those are the like literal, yeah. 
you have to take care of your family. Yeah. But in the single season, you get to grow in the fruit of the spirit, mm -hmm. kindness and peace and gentleness and long suffering. I mean, you get to grow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. the, the working of miracles and the gift of faith. Mm -hmm. You get to grow. You get to study your Bible without being hindered by other people. Mm -hmm. You get to spend time with God, not just 15 minutes. You can spend 15 hours. I mean, you got to go to work yeah. and stuff like that. But what I'm saying is that this is a great season. It is. Don't don't diss it. You know what I'm saying? Don't, Absolutely. Don't act like, oh, I'm single and it sucks. No, be single and satisfied. Yeah. Single and, and mm -hmm. back to the preparation, like I, I know of a couple, um, they still go to our church uh, in our Gainesville campus and um, they were single. I mean, they maybe got married in their late 20s, early, early 30s. Mm -hmm. um, and they were just about God's business. Yeah. I mean, just like kingdom warriors. And they got married. They have a baby now, a young baby, maybe one, two years old. But they, they don't have any strife. Like their marriage is like good. Like they're not arguing. They're not fighting. They love, you yeah. know, like th they love the married life, mm -hmm. but they did it right <laughs> as a single. You yeah. know, they were in the house like all the time serving. Not like, you know, crazy, but like all as much as they could they were serving, um, praying, just all kinds of stuff. And I'm just thinking about them as I think about single people. It's just like enjoying your singlehood, enjoying where you are and making the most out of it. Because when you do, if it's your desire, you're going to do it. You know, it's going to happen. When you do, it can be so good. Yeah. To take care of what you need to take care of yeah. in this season. So good. Number nine would be get in shape. Mm. And I would really speak this as a word over single people like this is a season and if you're saying, I'm going to prepare my yard, I'm going to prepare my soil, and then I'm going to build a house, this is a great time for you to get in the best shape of your life. Yeah. Um, there's spiritual shape, there's emotional shape, but there's also physical shape. Mm -hmm. Like as a single person, I, I just feel like I want to teach, especially my daughters, my spiritual daughters, that is. I want to teach you how to bait the hook. Mm -hmm. I, I wish I, we should do a podcast on how to win a man. Mm -hmm. If you want that podcast, let us know. I, I want to give you like 10 keys of how to win a man because many people don't bait the hook right. Mm -hmm. Like if you come out of the house, like a men are visual. Most mm -hmm. men, I, I, you know, most men are visual. So it does matter what you look like. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so um, if when you come out, you go to the Publix, you might want to go with your hair done, get your nails done. Put a little makeup on. You mean I just can't be me and walk out you. and you could, you know, you know and you I got to go out because if he don't like me looking to. like the real me, then yeah. why would I want him? I'm anyway? just saying first catch him, first catch him. Then you can clean him and then come out like every, however you want to come out. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, but what I'm saying is that men are visual and I'm not saying that you got to go be Holly Berry. How about that name? Um, you, I'm not saying that you got to go and put uh, and be. The <laughs> There's a couple of names stop, stop, that you stop, like stop. to say. The, the, um, the, I'm not saying that you got to go and be this model or be some perfect person on the outside, but you can be the best you you can be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you don't have to be a certain shape or you size. You, it's just to be, you know, like you say, you in you shape. Yeah. The best you like. Can we just talk about that mm -hmm. for a minute, because I think there's so much media pressure mm -hmm. for women to be like a certain size. Oh, like my all gosh. Of the pictures are like women who are a zero or a one in size. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the average woman is it's not changing that. now, it's which changing is good. Now. But that's not our message. Our mm -hmm. message is like, just be the best you you can be. Yeah. Because there's going to be some people that are tall. There are some people that are shorter. There's going to be some people that are um, more what would it be? Not thick. Uh, that might not be appropriate. Uh, heavy set. I don't know. What is appropriate? Um, big, small, big boned, short, tall. Just wider. You know, there's going to be people that are thinner, wider, bigger, taller, darker, lighter. Mm -hmm. Be the best you you mm -hmm. can be. And be um, happy with the skin and, the, and, and who you are. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Fulfill. Don't try to be anybody yeah. else. But doggone it, get yourself in yeah. the best and possible shape. The best shape. you is a healthy you. Yeah. So If you go to the doctor and they say you are 35 pounds overweight, mm -hmm. do something about it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Like go get yourself. Like if you're single, get, in the, get into the gym. When you come to church, present the best you that you possibly mm -hmm. can. Not just at church, wherever you go. Mm -hmm. I mean, be that person. It's like you're always putting your best self out there. Mm -hmm. And then when you get married... um and things change and you have kids and then you'll, you'll transition into that season. But now you've got something that's built off love. Well, and honestly, when a per person first meets you, it ain't based off love. It's just based off of infatuation and attraction and stuff. So yeah. play those cards. That's true. That's true. What were you going to say? 
I, you, you were talking about just being your best self. Uh -huh. um, you know, after you get married, you have kids, if you're women and, and men, men, men usually gain a couple pounds too, whenever the woman gets pregnant. Yeah. Um, and so, but you, what you do is in your single state, uh -huh. you're, you train, you, you're just training yourself for what you're going to do for the rest of your life. Well, I'm always going to be the best me. Yeah. I'm always going to be in my best health. Yeah. I'm going to go through, you know, ups and downs and, you know, all of this stuff, but uh -huh. I'm still going to go back to being the best me. Right. And I think that's important. And, you know, in some of this, I lean towards because if we were to be honest, in the church, the ratios are more women to men. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Men, if they want somebody, it's like they go find them by the time they're 25, they're married mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it applies to men, too. Mm -hmm. Like if you're single and you want somebody, get in shape. Like cut your hair. Mm -hmm. You got chest hair. It's just coming all out of your shirt. Men, just, women see everything. Yeah, like, we notice your fingernails. We're looking at your teeth. We're looking at your eyebrows. Them, we're looking at your ashy. ears. We're looking at it all. Yeah. Cut them ears. It, hair just growing out your mm -hmm. ear. I mean, get, you know, get, what is we that don't stuff? Need you to, men, women don't need you to be perfect, okay? But we just need you to not be gross, yeah. okay? Don't be gross. Like iron your clothes, Don't brother. do anything that makes us cringe and yeah. then we just gonna cringe away from you. But if you can just handle it, hold it's it down this, a little bit. It's the same principle. Be your best self. Be your best self. Yeah. And yeah. last but not least, number 10 is get a solid understanding of what marriage is all about. Mm -hmm. And I really feel like many single people, they wait till they get married to study marriage. And I realize that there are some doors that you don't want to open too soon, but I wouldn't want to wait till I drive a car to learn how to drive a car. I yeah. mean, so if you want to be married, there are some principles and that's why we're very open with yeah. our podcast and even teaching marriage stuff on Sunday. People yeah. say, well, there's a bunch of single people here. Single people don't want to wait till they're married to learn the principles right. of marriage. And so I'm glad that single people love our podcast because we're giving you the clue of what to do yeah. and more importantly, what not to do yeah. to have a successful relationship if it ever happens for mm -hmm. you, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, it's, at least from a 30,000 Put view, no stuff like, okay, divorce is not an option. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Family meetings, communication is important. I mean, you you want to know those things as a single mm -hmm. before you even get into marriage. I think that's, I never thought about that before, but you know, if you're single and you're always reading all, all these books about being single, mm -hmm. you're just learning about how to stay single. Mm -hmm. You know, but, you know, you will need to at one point. At if you, one point, you got to transition. It's yeah. almost like, okay, let's say there's nobody on the horizon. I uh -huh. get it. You just know maybe a little bit about marriage. You start dating somebody. You might want a little, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You start talking about engagement. You want to know more. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's almost mm -hmm. like, but I don't want you just to come from single into married and you really don't know. I, I think we did that. I no, I don't know if it's like, you know, I'm single and I read a book on marriage and all of a sudden I got some marriage spirit on me that what am I going to go fornicate and well, do something crazy? Well, that's how people act like. They I act like, get it. oh, and we see it in the comments. Like if we release something about sex, uh -huh. like sex God's way, sex God's way part one and two, uh -huh. y'all go check that out. Uh -huh. Or five things every husband needs to know about improving his sex life. Mm -hmm. You'll see, well, I got to stay away from that. Oh, I can't see that. And I, I guess I get it a little bit because there are some intimate things that we're sharing that they can't experience or even apply right now. Mm -hmm. But I think the opposite is just this detrimental where people are like, oh, I don't want to get like that spirit on me yet. I'm, I'm single. I can't handle it. Like, well, no, I you can can't. See maybe and when it comes to detailed <laughs> sex or something like that, yeah. But we don't do that on this podcast. You, yeah. We're talking about like That's regular stuff like orgasms and like, you know, pleasing each other, not I weaponizing mean, sex. And that ain't that deep. It's just bio biology. Honestly, it's not. It's not that deep. Like, we talk about penis vagina. If you don't know what a clitoris is and stuff like that, like, this is anatomy. I don't know why we have religion made stuff so religious. Mm -hmm. Like, we're talking about anatomy. Right. I'm talking to my kids. I just talked to my 13-year-old son about masturbation, about erections and He's ejaculations. 12. 12 years old. I'm talking <laughs> to him about, I'm using, like, anatomy terms. Like, you're not going to learn this in the locker room, bro. Exactly. You, you get an erection. You need to know what that is. How many are you having? Okay, this is what it is. This is what puberty is. You and know what I'm saying? if not, he's sitting around looking crazy like, oh, my God, what is going on? Yeah, but I just feel like for some reason, when we talk about like intimacy and stuff mm -hmm. like that, when I read the Book of Solomon, it, it's it's amazing to me. The he people talks about the pomegranate. They can almost be like, oh, that's just too much for me. But you watching Fifty Shades of Grey. Mm. It's like this is too much for you. But you watch rated R movies 
Mm-hmm. And so, no, no, this is not too much for you. It's going to be okay. It's okay. You can hear this, but still keep yourself disciplined. Mm-hmm. And the church said amen. Amen. <laughs> we out of time for today, guys. We love you so much, and we hope that you enjoy today's podcast. If you did enjoy this content, let us know right now by commenting, liking, sharing, and even writing a review. Your feedback is... It blesses us. We love to know how this is being used to improve your life in God and the life of your relationship with the people that God has placed in your life. If you're new to our podcast, hit the subscribe button right now. We want you to join our family and be the first to get the content. We release new content every Thursday at 3 p.m. If you want to come hang with us, come to Orlando. We're having a live conference the second week in October. Tickets are going fast. Make sure that you get yours on today. And uh, we love you guys, and we'll see you real soon. Peace.